How's it going YouTube? This is Anthony from Woolwork for Rice. This is part 3 of a 5 part series where I show you how to modify your DMG01 Game Boy for chiptune music. In this video I'll be showing you how to bivert your DMG01 Game Boy. A few changes to the series. We first started out with a green Play It Loud DMG01 Game Boy, but those parts have decided to grow feet and walk away. So we're going to continue the series with a clear DMG01 Play It Loud Game Boy. Also, originally, I had stated that we were going to do a dual Pro Sound mod, but we will keep it to just an RCA Pro Sound mod because this Game Boy is not going to have an additional quarter inch stereo jack. In order to bivert your Game Boy, you would first need to install a backlight kit with an inverted polarizer. Second, you would need to install a bivert chip. These are 74HC04 hex inverter chips. They're dual inline package chips, also known as the Bivert chip, because these are the chips that are used to bivert the screen on your DMG01 Game Boy and the Game Boy Pocket. The purpose of biverting your screen is for a more crisp screen contrast. When you bivert your DMG01 Game Boy or Game Boy Pocket, you're inverting the pixels twice. First, by using the inverted polarizer film on your backlight kit. Second is through the bivert chip itself. All the pixels you see on your Game Boy screen, when broken down into computer speak, are a series of ones and zeros. Now for this example, let's just say that the black shaded pixels are ones and the blank pixels, which are not shaded, are zeros. The data goes in through the bivert chip as ones and zeros, and when they come out, they come out as zeros and ones. Now with an inverted polarizer screen, the pixels come out uh, correctly shaded, the dark pixels are dark and the blank pixels are blank, but there's more screen contrast. There are two other methods for biverting your DMG01 Game Boy or your Game Boy Pocket. The first one is to use an SMT 74HC04 bivert chip, and the other one is using a dual inline package integrated circuit. And those are generally used for um, Game Boys that have a ton of mods in them. These are very small chips and very small boards. So if you definitely need to save space inside the case for other mods, then you'll be using these. But for this, um, this video, we'll be going over using the standard size 74HC04 bivert chip. For information on the other forms of biverting your Game Boy, I'll have links posted below in the description. Now for a closer look at the chip itself. Here's the 14 pin chip in all its glory. Before we start, we will first need to identify the pins we're going to be utilizing. Please note that the pins on this chip have been bent outward for instructional purposes only. I will be going over how to prep the chip here in a little bit. Now to find the proper orientation of the chip, looking at it from a top view, there is a half crescent shaped indentation that is located on the left side of the chip. There will also be a circle indentation located on the right side of the chip. There is usually a dot that is located above pin 1, but these chips didn't come with them. Here are the pins numbered in order starting from left to right, on the bottom are pins 1 through 7, and the top row continuing from right to left are pins 8 through 14. We will be working with pins 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, and 14. Now we will be going over the preparation of the PCB and the solder points where we will be wiring up the Biver chip to the PCB. We will be working with the rear PCB, specifically the upper right hand portion of the rear PCB. The first thing you will have to do is cut these two traces on the circuit board, severing the connection between the two points. After you cut them, it should look like this. After severing the two connections, you'll be soldering pins 2 and 4 here, 1 and 3 here, and finally 14 and 7 here. Now to prep the Biver chip and the PCB. To prep the chip, we'll be snipping off the ends of the legs with diagonal cutters. After you're done, the legs should look like this. Since we are only using pins 1 through 4, 7, and 14, we will be bending back the unused pins down against the chip. 